So I'm going to be honest with you guys, I really didn't think we'd be back here so soon, but it seems like we got some more information on the whole Jumix front, including some stuff on Lil Saku, so I thought I'd bring it all together in this video, try to structure it together, and give you all the new info I got. But before I get into all of that, I want to show you how Jumix actually ended up responding to my video on his Instagram story, which is pretty interesting overall, because he never really responds to people who make videos on him. He only ever says, oh, it's all the same thing, blah, blah, blah. They always talk about my doxing and everything else, which I definitely agree with, so so that's why I made my video completely different and I feel like it really struck a nerve with them. It's one of those be careful what you wish for situations but before I get into this I do want to say that I understand this is all just basic drama on Instagram. I'm not going to play the victim here and be like oh Jumix is coming after me he's a big artist and he's coming after a little YouTuber. I don't care we're having fun with this and I just want to show you what he said. It's not like the slum situation. I'm not going to sit here and be like Jumix came after me I'm so scared. So he started off by sharing a screenshot of my comment section fighting with people who were saying that he couldn't say the n-word for context on this in my initial video I said he had the n-word pass a German father and a Hispanic mother which yes means he can say the n-word I guess some people thought that he didn't so he was arguing with them about how Spanish people are too. I have no stake in this whatsoever. I'm white. I really don't care. It was a joke overall, but it seems like Jumix was really mad about this. And I guess he was spamming the comments so much that apparently some of his comments got deleted. And then he blamed me saying that I hate it free speech. But of course, being the nice guy I am who always wants that open dialogue, I tagged him back and said, Jumix, I love free speech. Why don't we talk about it? And then after that, he deleted all his stories and I thought that would be the end of it. Within three days later, he posted a video of him talking about YouTubers who are trying to get him to do an interview on their channel and that he's the face of clout and that he won't tell his story unless he does a documentary himself because all these youtubers are just trying to clout chase off of him i get all these dms saying you want to tell your story on my youtube channel Fuck no i don't bro you think i'm stupid you think i'm really stupid bro first of all i got my own documentary coming in summer second of all i am in clout you guys not realize that every youtube video about me is the only viewed youtube in their channel if you know what i mean like that shit's dead as bro. unless they're mentioning my name on their channel then it's gonna get views i am mother clout look at this face this is and clout face and i know this video is about me and i know what you're saying there's no way this video is about you it's pretty broad but if you've seen the end of my last video i talked about how i went into jumix's dms to try to ask for an interview and one final thing i do want to mention before the video is over i did actually reach out to jumix to try to interview him he didn't respond to me which is fair i also reached out to a couple people around him to do an interview and none of them wanted to talk about the whole story which is fine they don't have to i'm not forcing them to the only reason i'm saying this is because by some stretch of the imagination that jumix actually watched Watches this video and then actually responds to it. I know he's gonna say this guy was just in my DMs. He was on my dick, and yes, sir, I was, because I want that real story for my own sick, morbid fascination. And a lot of people said I was begging for clout or trying to get into his DMs, talk to him. I just wanted clout so bad and to be involved. But I'll give you a little bit more context about why I did that in the first place. So sometime after I made my "It's Okay to Cry" video, a couple people who knew Jumix actually hopped into my messages and started talking to me. They weren't talking about Jumix, but they wanted to talk about maybe making some videos with me or just saying, hey, they liked my videos and one of those guys was named ghost homes he hit me up and said he liked my videos he wanted to work in the future and maybe even have me come out to the whole chicago studio that they're setting up right now maybe film some stuff and try to network through that i said that's cool thank you dude i'm not gonna lie i was the first one to ask about jumix i seen a picture of the two of them together and for the longest time i want to know what went down between jumix and saku because i'd always heard these strange predo allegations coming from saku so i want to know more i even asked him about saku and he said i don't really want to talk about her she's kind of a weirdo which is fine and then after after that I said could I maybe do an interview with Jumix where he'd want to talk about that he said yeah for sure hit him up so I hit up Jumix and that's basically how we got to where we are now with him calling me out on his story now to be fair I think Ghost Homes was being genuine I think he really did want to work with me so nothing against the kid I think he's a good guy it doesn't seem like there's anything too wrong about him and I've actually been dodged by I don't know conundrum in the past as well so I know they don't really want to talk about the situation which I totally understand and besides that I pretty well thought that'd be the end of Jumix I had a little bit of a back and forth with him online thought it was kind of funny and that's all there is to it until somebody known as eternal shinane who i actually interviewed on my other channel decided to send me a video exposing jumix even farther now of course i've seen this before it's the old bucktooth production video from about a year ago where he basically took all the information from the old progress video and repackaged it into a new video and then it got about a hundred thousand views everybody was watching it at the time and it kind of reignited the whole interest in jumix but there's basically no new information in this video it's basically all the stuff from the old progress video just repackaged so there's nothing i can really say about 
about it, but then I realized it's not actually the Bucktooth production video. It's a whole new video made by somebody called Zane Peep. So here I am thinking, here's a guy who's probably trying to get another 15 minutes of fame off the Jimmy story, telling the exact same story again. But once I scroll through it, I hear the name Little Saku. I hear the name Ghost Holmes. I hear the name, I don't know, Conundrum. And I'm like, oh my God, this guy might actually know something new. So for a little bit of context, Zane Peep is actually somebody who was a big fan of Jumix all the way back when he made his initial video, Smoking Weed in the Classroom, the one that went viral on No Jumper. He followed him, added him on Snapchat. At the time, Zane was only 14 and him and Jumix became close friends. My name is Zane Peep on YouTube. I used to own an Instagram. I created it when I was 13 to 14 years old. Well, I'm going to explain how I knew Jumex and how I became friends with him slowly through time. I mean, there's a kid smoking in class and yelling world star um i think it was reposted by no jumper at the time and uh they tagged his username called lil jumex so i followed him instantly and listened to his songs and i instantly fell in love with the dude's music like damn like i'm a texas guy on instagram i was 14 years old when i texted him that and i remember jumex himself back in the day texting me back saying thank you and that's how it all started he ended up creating a channel where he would post jumex's old music all the stuff that he released under low jumex that he would delete after he got blown up with core tan and then after that he got quite a few subscribers a lot of views but jumex's management caught wind of this and deleted the channel outright for copyright violations despite that though he stayed close friends with jumex throughout most of his rise to fame but unfortunately after he couldn't make it to a show that jumex was throwing about a state away because of course he was 14 and he couldn't drive there jumix got extremely angry told him he didn't want him as a fan anymore and cut him off completely i'm gonna show you a clip real quick of jumix just pretty much treating me like shit because i couldn't come to his show nigga i know you're not coming but it's whatever if you want to be like that be like that y'all don't even follow me on the gram i don't give a f you know why i don't give a f because if it wasn't for you i wouldn't have been here so even if you don't currently support me give a f at least you did in some point of time and it got me to where I'm at now. So thinking like real shit, a nigga spoke facts. My boy, you gotta come, Cincinnati, Ohio, September 1st. Two years pass by, he's able to follow Jumix for a while, but then he completely just falls out with him, doesn't pay attention anymore, but he has all this insider information that he never exposed before, but he finally decided to put it all together in this video because he's tired of people making the same old video like Matty Balls and all those guys just telling the publicly available version of the Jumix story, but now that I have these details, I'm finally able to construct the entire story. So if you watch my Jumix video, basically this is me trying to tell more details on that, so you need to watch that for context, but this is part two. Let's get into it. I'm sorry this is so so confusing i really hope you're entertained but basically going back to sad boy suffer which is the whole group that jumix created after he blew up with the whole Cortan thing he already knew conundrum before but what i didn't realize is that conundrum was actually just the guy that he met on soundcloud they never knew each other in real life and then there's sad c rod who i initially called sad crod it turns out that jumix just met this kid through soundcloud it's not somebody he ever knew in real life so he's not too important to the story but that's the answer to where he came from but there's actually three other members of sad boy suffer that are important to the story but first up we got Travis Loveburns. That's the guy that Jumix stole the whole clothing brand from, the reason that he met Saku in the first place, and he actually exposed Jumix initially, giving all that information to progress, but now they're friends again. Now, it's kind of weird how that worked out, but he'll be important a little bit later. Oh, and also, this is the only person that Jumix actually knew in real life. All the rest of these people were just SoundCloud kids that met Jumix through the internet, Instagram, or something else, but Travis was actually somebody he went to high school with before he got expelled. Because yes, Jumix actually got expelled for the whole weed smoking thing, and then he ended up going to court apparently. Apparently, he told the story on Facebook, but I'm getting off topic. Let's get back to Sad Boy Suffer. So next up, we got Romance Planet, which is once again another kid that Jumix met through SoundCloud that he actually spoke on quite recently in a now deleted reel, saying that he accidentally almost planted him in the industry. But apparently, Romance Planet pooped on a toilet seat, so he had to kick him out of Sad Boy Suffer. I don't know. Unfortunately, the reel is now gone, or at least private, so I can't show it to you. But the initial story he told about kicking Romance Planet out of Sad Boy Suffer was completely different. Apparently, he was flirting with underage fans. That's what Jumix said and he was abusing animals but he never showed proof of any of that so a lot of people think that Jumix might have just been jealous of him. It seems like Jumix wanted to have a group of people around him. I'm not really sure why. Maybe it was for features. Maybe he wanted to prop them up. Maybe he just wanted a bunch of yes men around him but it seems like after they started to get more talented than him he would kick them out of the group because he got jealous. That can be shown with the final member known as Kill Jill who ended up getting kicked out of Sad Boy Suffer after only a couple months because once again he was getting more talented than Jumix so Jumix got mad, kicked him out and that really started off the whole drama 
Obama and Sad Boy suffer with the doxing that we now know about. Because both Conundrum and Krob would try to call out Jumix for apparently being very addicted to Xanax and crashing out, and then he would get really mad. That's when he doxed them, as well as Travis, tried to steal the clothing brand, and was just crashing out on everybody around him. It turns out the final verdict on Jumix is that he was never a big Xan head during his high school days, but after he got into the industry, he started doing them for the image, and then after that, he started going crazy on everybody, starting fights, and just becoming kind of mentally unwell. So of course, after this, we all know the story. He ends up doxing everybody, and then he gets dropped by his label, but there's one detail that has never been mentioned before because his label was actually able to cover it all up, and this is the real reason that he actually got dropped by his label and started going under the name Goodnight Mark. And this is because allegedly, Jumix was getting really high on Xanax and going into his underage fans' DMs and starting to with them, apparently sending dick pictures. All of this is alleged. I'm not sure if it's true. It's not for me to say if it is or isn't, but all I'm saying is that this started a scandal with everybody commenting on his pictures, calling him a Pedro. But Jumix's label definitely did a good job of covering this up because I was never aware of this. Most people around him were never aware of this. Progress never covered it, and this was completely taken out of this story for years to come. Jumix's at the time girlfriend confirmed that this was real, saying that he actually was what they were accusing him of. I'm not really sure if these are real or not. They could be fake. More importantly than all that, the primary accused or little Jumix at this time was none other than little Saku. That's right, they were actually playing Fortnite together and she exposed this clip of him saying some pretty out of pocket shit. Mark's just standing at a f***ing bush. Bro. I wish I could date nine year old. Now I do think this is a joke, a pretty off color one I have to say. He was probably high on Xanax and just saying some random shit, but I mean it could be true, could not be true, but we can't really trust Saku because we all know she has a pretty vile past herself. But yeah, this is the whole reason that Jumix was dropped by his label, started going under the name Goodnight Mark, trying to escape the Jumix name and get those allegations knocked off of him. And tried to change his name to Bubblegum Numb, and then after that it was XOXO, but after they started making Jumix videos again, he finally came back to the name a couple years later, thinking he was safe from all these allegations coming back on him again. It was sometime around 2024 because I know when he put out that song this time under the Jumix name, he had, well, the Jumix name, and then after that, he changed it to XOXO. I remember I was talking to Conundrum around the time sometime in 2023, and Jumix ended up commenting on one of his pictures. He was going under the XOXO name at the time, but I feel like there were so many videos coming out about him around then that he decided to go back to Jumix because he's like, well, that's the name that everybody knows me for, and these allegations probably won't be brought up again, but because of Zayn Peep, here they are again, and there's a whole new video. But now that we talked about Jumix for almost the entire video, I now want to talk about Saku because I found out a couple more things about her. There's no real screenshots or anything, it's just stories of people telling me stuff about her after my video came out because she's pretty infamous in the underground but not as well known as Jumix, so finding information on her is a lot harder. So take all these stories with a grain of salt because you know, they could be true, they could be not, but seeing as all the information that I gathered in my previous video, it doesn't seem too out of character for her, so I thought they're worth telling, but if they're not true, they're not true, but don't take them as law. So she also ended up responding to me a couple days after my video came out. I was already dealing with all the slump stuff around the time, so I didn't see her DM right away, but I have read it, took a screenshot, and she deleted it now, so there was no response there. I do want to mention she now goes under the name Ray of Sunshine on Instagram, which a lot of people like to attribute to me, but it's not actually because of me. She already had her name changed before I made my video, so as much as I'd like to take that wing, guys, I can't. It wasn't because of me. And here's what she had to say. Could you please remove the video of me? I understand that you're here to get the word out, but I've actually proven a lot of that to be false here years ago. I didn't rebrand to escape it either, which I'm realizing is what people think, but I didn't know about your video until today when a friend was mentioning it and I had no clue what he was talking about. I've grown a lot since I was manic and psychotic and greatly separated myself from those types of people. I've gotten on medication and surrounded myself with good people. I'm really trying to move on from those things in my life and I would appreciate it if you had at least messaged me to chat about the validity of those things that you put on the internet. Okay, so there's a lot to unpack here, but the first thing I want to say is that she never mentioned the actual thing she's being accused of which is talking to underage boys. I really don't care if you're manic or psychotic or anything to do with that. I'm only trying to get the voices of the people who think that you did them wrong out there and show the evidence that you actually did something pretty vile. And if you disproved it in the past, then I would love to see that information. And of course, you can definitely respond and try to disprove any of it. I'm not really on one side or the other. If you have all the information to show that you never did that stuff, then you can definitely bring it out. But I have to say, it's pretty stacked information against you, so it's not gonna be easy. It's weird to say that she disproved this in the past. The only thing I've ever seen is her initial response where she basically blamed it all on one person being a crazy ex trying to out her and that she never really did anything wrong and she never mentioned once again the actual thing she's being accused of. And if you really did do the things that were brought up in the prior video, then I really don't care if you've grown and got better because you still have victims that are hurt to this day. So it's great that you got better and that your life's better, but those people are still hurt and damaged from you. So you should probably try to make amends or something. I don't know. I pretty well see the same excuse over and over again. It was five years ago. Stop bringing up old drama. Well, 
well if you actually preyed on underage boys it doesn't matter how old it is bill cosby was doing shit 40 years ago he still went to jail there's no time limit or due date on this type of stuff if you've done that type of crime then you need to be brought to justice no matter what and also her mentioning that i should have talked to her before the video came out which i used to actually do but every time i did i just get manipulated and gaslit into thinking that they never did anything wrong they would just try to get sympathy out of me and then i wouldn't be able to make the video the way i want to make it with an unbiased take on both sides i feel like talking to these people before i make the video is never a good thing i tried that with the slutty sony stuff and all i got was ignored and then i tried to talk to other people and they ended up just giving me fake stories or trying to mess with the story overall like you're not going to give me an unbiased take on any of this but honestly after this i wasn't really going to bring it up or mention it again i was like whatever who really cares she responded i guess it's fine it's out there now the victims got to speak in the comment section below and if it comes out as true it comes out as true if it comes out as false it comes out as false at least the information is out there now but then she tried to launch a privacy complaint on my video to try to get it taken down and if you've disproved all this stuff in the past why don't you just do it again why don't you just respond to my video why are you trying to get it taken down if you're trying to get it taken down it probably means there's a nugget of truth in there if you actually had evidence against it when you just make a response video then responded to me on her story said been fighting to stand up for myself for close to 10 years now it's always the same shake just getting regurgitated i've said what i had to say so many times it's just exhausting at this point i'm the happiest i've ever been in my entire life i've grown into a person i'm proud of but some people still feel the need to bring up lies about me from six plus years ago that i've spoken on so many times please leave me alone that's probably all i'm going to say on it if you're one of the people looking at my account for tea or drama this isn't the place for you if you have an issue with me feel free to message me or if you want said proof much love and thank you to those who have always supported me and then she said this on another story spreading misinformation is harmful and toxic think about the lives you're affecting doing so find some joy in the good things in life lady i think you need to think about the people that you've affected in your life because you're not thinking about that whatsoever you're saying i'm better i'm good i've already mentioned this many times well i haven't seen any proof of you mentioning it before or disproving it or having supposed proof why do people have to dm you to get the proof i'm not saying that you have to post about it every day i don't want you to be a tea or drama channel but maybe you should just put it on your story like the actual proof you want people to dm you so you'll probably say oh girl it's all fake they're just trying to come after me blah 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 you completely blamed one person the last time you supposedly apologized for this when it came out about lil xan i've never seen another response if you have one feel free to definitely put it out there and of course she says it's misinformation let me tell you guys all about misinformation because i've been hit with this quite a few times misinformation is knowing that something's wrong and then knowingly putting out the wrong information putting out some information that might not be fully confirmed is not misinformation it's just putting that out and posing it as allegations i'm not going to sit here and argue with anybody in the comments anymore when i put out a video that says allegations or i say allegations in the video that's what it is allegations you can either prove or disprove it but then people tell me well you're putting it in a video so that means that you're actually putting the allegation out there and you're hurting their careers well that's only for people who only look at the thumbnail and the title if you're not going to watch through the entire video i really can't help you if you're that stupid then you're that stupid i'm not here to bully people i'm not here to slander people all i'm trying to do is get the information out there if it's true it's true if it's not it's not so many times this gets talked about in a reddit thread or somewhere on a tumblr and then people say oh it's already been talked about but the information never reaches the broader audience they're able to see people get bullied behind the scenes they can't tell their stories because they have no voice all i'm trying to do is get that out there and if i think the allegation is false then i probably wouldn't put it out there or i would say that it's an allegation and i don't believe in it but either way i feel like it's good to put out there and yes for everybody asking if somebody would actually disprove all the allegations against them would i acknowledge it yes i'd probably make a whole video saying that they actually disproved the allegations and then i would move on from there you know i'm just covering the story and if they can disprove it then great i'm glad but every time it's like i've already covered this and it's a little story saying saw we i didn't mean to do this a bunch of evil women came after me or a bunch of evil men came after me that's not actually addressing the situation and the worst part is besides gimmicks there's been other people who have told me that she's actually tried to cancel other people in the past so it's okay when you're canceling somebody else but when somebody's bringing up your old shit then it's drama and then it's tea and you don't want it brought up anymore but anyways i have a whole bunch of other information on saku that i want to make into a video i might just make a whole part two because i don't really want to half ass it i have a bunch of stories and stuff that i kind of want to put together here but i feel like maybe it's not the best idea to just kind of throw it out here i don't want to look like i'm just throwing out anything to try to cancel her and get back at her because i'm mad i want to take her down and blah 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 but one thing i do want to correct is that she's not actually with weather anymore i was told they broke up and weather actually had to change his name quite a few times because saku was stalking him so badly that he had to change his legal name and his artist name a couple times just to get away from her and hopefully he is away from her now but yeah i'm sorry for putting those two in the same breath he's not with her at all anymore but anyways now that i have that all covered that's basically the story of jumix probably completely complete it now hopefully like i said they're allegations they're not even my allegations so take them with a grain of salt i'm not saying that he is i'm just saying that's why his label dropped him same with the saku stuff and if she wants to 
to disprove it or come into kind of a public setting and talk to me, then I definitely would, I guess. I would be willing to hear your side of the story. And finally, I want to say I'm not this altruistic guy that's trying to, you know, bring out all these stories just because of victims and I'm such a good person and I need to do it because I'm such a good person. Like, of course, I like covering these stories. I have my own fascination with them. And of course, I like letting these people be heard. I like seeing them go in the comments and be able to talk to each other, find each other. That makes me feel good. But if something makes you feel good, it's not truly altruistic. All of that's to say is that I don't want you to put me on this moral high horse where I'm a perfect person who can't be touched, that I've never done anything wrong. I'm human. We're all human. We all mess up. And I'm making videos about people messing up. And some of it's more serious than others. Some of it is just bullshit drama. And don't get me wrong. I like to have fun and go back and forth on Instagram. So I'm not going to pretend that I don't. And I do want to apologize for kind of painting myself as a victim in the whole little slum situation. I put myself in that situation. Sure, I wasn't expecting it to happen in the way that it was. But I need to take accountability that I put myself there. I got involved. So nobody should really feel bad for me for getting myself in that situation. But I do really want to shout out everybody who reached out to me during that time and said they've been in a similar situation or related to me or said they have my back. I do really appreciate that. And that means a lot. And I definitely want to highlight the positive comments as much as the negative. This has truly been an amazing journey for me so far. It's been awesome to be able to make these videos and have people actually care, show up and watch them, meet a lot of cool people in the underground. And I felt like I just wasn't doing anything before these videos were starting, which of course that means I'm a negative guy who's sitting around. I have no joy in my life besides taking people down. But no, for real, I was really in a bad place when I started making these videos and now everything just seems like it's getting better. There's more positivity in my life. I have a good support structure around me and that's all because of your guys' support, watching my videos and really sticking around. So I truly do appreciate you guys from the bottom of my heart. I love talking to you guys in DMs. I love talking to you guys and this isn't me like manipulating you so you'll fall in love with me, blah, blah, blah. I'm just really saying that and if ever something happens in the future where you don't mess with me anymore, that's okay. Now with all that said, I have a second channel which I call Twisted Society. That has a lot of videos on there of music, people posting music. I do a couple interviews. And if anybody around this situation wants to do an interview with me, you can. You're not forced to, but I'm just saying it's open for you. Jumix, Saku, Crod, all of you guys, any of you want to speak on this, it's open. The invitation is there. The second you start trying to take down any other interviews or anything else, that invitation will be taken away. But if you want to publicly speak about it, that's fine. Want to do it on another channel because you don't want to give me clout, perfectly fine as well. Just saying the invitation is open. So now that I've waffled on for all this time, I want to give a big shout out to Zane Peep for making that video and talking to me about the whole situation. He was able to shine a light on a lot of stuff about Jumix. He's a cool guy who's trying to do the same thing as me and really shine a light on the underground's darker sides as well as of course the good stuff so i will definitely link his channel in the description below if you want to check that out big shout out to him if he comments on this i'll definitely pin it and on a final note jumik saku if you try to delete that video off his channel i already have it downloaded so it will get re-uploaded somewhere or he'll re-upload it either way don't go after the guy it's already downloaded it's already too late appreciate you guys if you want to talk to me you can if not then well it is what it is twist the world out number one drama farm out